Welcome to Violin Adventures number 143. We jump right off into three repairs. And interesting enough, each one of them has a little trouble with the neck or the fingerboard. And then at the end of the video, we have attached a surprise little concert here that happened here at the shop and also a little look at some of those products that are under the video. I ordered some and they came in the mail. So to get into it, we're starting off with a violin that came from Massachusetts. Okay, we have a box here from Massachusetts. Let's look inside. Yes, all these boxes in here giving support is awesome. I did. Okay, we've got a bow which we'll rehair. And a violin. All right, you can hear the sound pulse rattling around inside. So we'll get that out and get it a nice new bridge and some new strings. Okay, we're starting off with our violin from Massachusetts which needs to be set up, but here on the back, it looks like over time, and this, some old violins will do this, the, the glue will just loosen up, and if, if, especially if the violin gets a little warm. So you can see here the, the height of the fingerboard is too low, and that's because this heel is not in the correct placement. Anyway, what we've got to do now is separate this heel from the button and make sure that the block is in the right place and then we can reset the neck. Okay, so the good thing is the block is firm and solid and it was just loose on one side and it looks like there's just a pile of glue in there that we need to take off and then hopefully it will go back where it belongs. So I'm going to clean off the glue and I'll see you after that. Okay, this is the Massachusetts violin. I got the neck all cleaned up, all the old glue out. So I'm going to take it out here and get it ready for gluing. Okay, everything is set. And we're going to let that dry for a good 24 hours. And then we can get going on the bridge and the sound post. Now what was wonderful is there was a little chip of wood that came off and they, he saved it in this little container. That saves us so much time and cost if you have those little pieces that we can glue right back on. So I'm going to put that on first. And then we're going to make a bridge for this violin and set up the sound post. So while this is drying, we're going to go to the next violin and I'll let you know what that is in just a moment. Now this violin, it lost its neck and when the neck broke off, so did the button. So this is a little bit of a complicated repair where we need to get the button off of here and we need to inlay a support for the button and then we can reset the neck. So we're going to get started on this. I have all the parts in this little box and this one we'll call the Magini Copy. And this is the one where the button is broken right off the back. So first things first, I'm going to get this button off. There it goes. Okay, the button is off. So I'm going to set this aside in a safe place. I'm going to get a, put the button aside. And next, we're going to inlay a piece of wood here to support the button. Okay, what we're doing first since the back is loose from the upper block and the ribs are separated, I'm going to glue this first before we do the inlay. The inlay is almost ready to go, but we have to get this 
solid first. Okay, this needs to dry for 24 hours also before we can put our support block in there. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now let's go on to, okay, we're gonna go on to the Hornsteiner Copy Violin. This is a nice violin and it has a crack over here and also a crack down here. So that means we need to open it up. Yeah, this violin has been opened before and that's something that's hard when you're reopening a violin. It wants to go where the last person uh, opened it. <laughs> so you have to be careful that it will open in the right place. So right off we know this violin is not 18, from 1872. This is a violin made in the 1900s. Um, and made to look old. So I would guess this is probably around 1960s or 70s. The crummy sound post, so we'll definitely want to replace that. Okay, here we're at the Massachusetts Violin and we just got the neck in and it has been drying overnight and the bridge is ready. Cut a new bridge to fit the height of this fingerboard. And now, looking at the sound post, this is a good piece of wood, but it is too old. And we need a fresh piece of uh, wood for the sound post so that it is more lively. Because violins are made so that we can replace the bridge and the sound post after so many years, they need replacing. Okay, we're going to put the new sound post in. Okay, I'm splicing out a natural piece of wood of spruce here uh, to repair the side where the wood has rubbed off over time. Okay, working on the Massachusetts violin, we have two edges that need to be built back up. So the glue is hot. Okay, I've taken this nice piece of spruce and I have fitted this to this area right here, marked it right where I want it to go, and we're gonna glue that on. Okay, over here is the corner and I've been working on some way to glue this little corner piece on. So I put up a little jig here and I fitted this little piece of wood. Um, the weight of the rubber band pushes the repair off. So that's why I have this little block of wood just to hold the pressure from pushing it down. And we'll let these dry now for 24 hours. Okay, this is our Magini copy, and this is the one that had a broken neck with a button broken off. So yesterday we stabilized the upper block so that it wouldn't move. It's now glued solid to the back, how it's supposed to be. And so now we can go on with putting in our support block for the um, button. And this is also going to support the neck. So what I've got to do now is fit this support block in here so it's nice and solid. So that's going to take a little while, but for all of you watching, it'll just take a second. Okay, we're at this uh, Magini Copy Violin and we are ready to glue in the support block We've got it fitted and it's a nice tight fit. So first off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set in the button first. Okay, we're gonna let this dry now for 24 hours and then we'll be able to put the neck back in.
okay now it's time for a little rant right okay yesterday we opened up this violin which has a label stating that it's a hornsteiner from 1872 well they did a good job making it look old right it's nicely antiqued and it looks nice and old but it absolutely made my blood start to boil when I opened it up to see this wood is not from the 1800s. This was probably sometime in the 1900s. And as far as where it's made, uh, let me tell you a story. So a few years back, I was curious because there was someone on eBay selling these very nice looking instruments. And I was curious because they were affordable and they had labels of all these famous makers. So I went ahead and ordered a cello. When I got the cello, first off the neck was broken off and I could see right away they were doing this on purpose so that they could get money from the insurance when I ship it back. So they were just making money all the way around. Then when I looked at the wood, the wood was very fresh. So these people were being very deceitful and of course I turned them in. And so that's the story that immediately flashes through my brain when I look at something that's labeled old and you get inside and it is, it is not that old. So beware of fake labels. And there was a lot of this going on in the 1800s, but sorry to say, it still goes on today in the 1900s and even in the 2000s. So on this violin, we are going to just take off. This was repaired before. We're just going to put the proper cleats in and then glue up over here where this crack was. The Hebrew Minute. Ki Shemesh Umagen Hashem Elohim Chen Uchavod Yiten Hashem Lo Yimnatov La Hochim Batamim. For a son and a shield. The Lord God will be grace and glory. The Lord will give. Uh, he will not withhold good from those who walk uprightly. If you know where this is found, please leave it in the comments below. Freddie wants to chat. Hi, everybody. Hi, uh, I'm Freddie. And, uh, and I got some pictures here to show you because... Uh, Mr. Winters sent in pictures of Mr. Cosman's hammers. It, that is, isn't that amazing? So, uh, Mr. Winters was so happy with the hammers that he wanted us to show them again. And I agree because I got my own hammer and they're amazing. So, so Freddie got just a little speechless there. So, I'll tell you what. Mr. Winters said about these hammers. He said that he got one from Mr. Cosman and he was hoping that Freddie would show it off. The workmanship on it is just exquis exquisite, truly silky smooth in the hand and just like a beautiful ballerina. Okay, here's the outside. It is very humid. It's just before a good rain. So I'm going to go inside so we can see better. Okay, inside the shop full of activity. Let's find out where we are on the projects. Here's our cello table. We're just going to go by. Here's our Magini copy. And this one has the button inlay drying so that this next week we can set the neck. And this is going to need a taller bridge because the neck will be back in the proper position. So we need a new bridge on there 
and probably with a new bridge you might want a new sound post. That's the Magini copy. Over here is, I think we were calling this the old violin, so we got the cracks cleated. We have to take down the cracks, close this up, get the uh, fingerboard on, and set this up again. Over here is our Massachusetts violin. So we have the edges gluing right now. The uh, new bridge is cut and a new sound post. So next week we're going to take down the edges. A surprise concert from a wonderful family that came about three hours to get here and they gave us a little concert. That's the scroll we have our Hebrew Minute on. I also ordered the white one, the little camping mug. Here it is with the harp on it. And the harp on here is our harps that we design here in this shop. Next, of course, I always use aprons. This is the gray, I got the gray with the harp on there. Okay, next we have the green one. This has the violin on it. So here is the, and it also has two pockets in the front, and this feels just good. Next is the artesian apron again. There it is, nice and big. So these are all adjustable, and I'm 5'5", five five, and I can adjust these to fit nicely, and it's really hard to, for me to find aprons that work. <laughs> Then I've got the little pouch here. Here's the little pouch. A nice zipper here. Here is a little cloth bag. And this is also cotton. So we have the scroll on here. Very nice. I'm really happy with the quality of these products because they're 100% cotton. And I tell you, when I look for aprons, I don't like the ones that are a mixture because they are so hot. When you wear them, they get so warm. Whereas the cotton is just cool. Uh, so I hope you can take advantage of these while you can. And um, check below, I believe we have another sale going on. It's free shipping. Well, thank you so much for watching and for all your wonderful comments. And thank you for subscribing and your thumbs up. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.